It also shows the amount of money that I made on the night. So the most expensive fish sold on the night was probably also the most surprising. I'm really, really excited that I bought these fish. I've always wanted them and I really hope you guys like these fish. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the Cichlid Major auction that happened in Sydney last week. Talk about how that auction went and also talk about how the fish went that I sold. So let's get into this week's video. So it's Saturday morning, my alarm goes off at 5 a.m. I'm dead tired, just like the Wollongong auction <laughs> morning. I hit the snooze button and I snooze till about 5.30, get up, make a coffee, come into the fish room and I start catching fish. The first fish I decided to catch were my albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety. They were quite easy to catch, didn't take me too long. And I left the Alto Lamprologus calvus last. So uh, it took me about three hours to catch all the lots of fish, those 16 lots of fish. And that was pretty much because I didn't want to overload the, uh, the bags with a lot of fish. I split a lot of the lots up. As you can see here, there were some lots uh, that had uh, actually four bags of fish, like my Julidochromus transcriptus gombi that were in this tank. I put one fish per bag just to stop aggression uh, and just so they could last the length of time that those fish were going to be in the bag. Uh, some of those fish will be coming close to uh, almost the 20 hour mark by the time they get to their final destination, their final uh, hopefully forever home. So um, bearing that in mind, you don't want to overstock the bags with a lot of fish. Uh, for instance, my Kawenga Goals as well, six per lot. Uh, I split uh, the lots into two bags, three fish per lot. My Neolamprologus brevis sunspot, I had some large males that I was selling with some smaller fish. So I put the large male by itself in a large bag with uh, the other fish, the five fish, in a bag by themselves. Now I also could have split up that bag of five Brevis Sunspot into a bag of two and a bag of three and taped those bags together. However, because of the size of the Brevis Sunspot, I didn't feel that was necessary. So they were in quite large bags as well. My Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold, four fish per bag, I just put them in the same bag. And because I was doing that, splitting the lots up into individual bags, it took a little bit longer than uh, you would probably think. And it took almost three hours to get all those fish in the bags, all done up, taped up, and uh, labels on the bags and writing on the bags. So it took almost three hours to do all that. So I got to the club at around 10 to 12, got in, fish were scrutinized, and I was happy, all ready to go by around uh, 12, 30, one o'clock. So overall, it was a fantastic night. I think there were about 400 lots that went through the auction. And the really good thing about it was that it was also an early night. I think everything was wrapped up by about 7.30 p.m. And the most popular type of fish that was sold on the night, funnily enough, wasn't a cichlid. It was actually albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety. And I unfortunately contributed to that popularity there as well. Yeah, that was the most popular fish followed by uh, Afwa Cobwees. There were quite a few of those going through as well. There were also some beautiful electric blues going through, electric yellows, as well as Malawi peacocks. Uh, the colours in the bags were unbelievable with some of those fish. There was also some beautiful epistogramma, some, some very rare ones going through. My cousin Adam sold a couple lots of his orange flash, and one of the rarer types of epistogramma to go through the auction was epistogramma agassisi alenqua. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that third name correctly, so I'll pop it on the screen here. Uh, they're a beautiful fish, and Adam was actually the successful bidder of those. So I can't wait to show you guys the colour that these will eventually get. They are quite young still. And you can see them here. They, uh, he's got them in a breeder box at the moment. Even though it's a small little container, is fine for these guys. And Adam has actually spawned a pistogramma in these breeder boxes before. Beautiful little fish. Uh, and this, this is what the adults look like here. And as you can see, the males are a stunning fish. So they were some of the rarer pistos that went through. Probably the rarest Tanganyikan that went through the auction was some Telmatochromus vitatus. And this is what the guys look like here. And they're a beautiful Lake Tanganyikan cichlid that are very, very underrated and quite rare in Sydney. Now, unfortunately, I can't remember every type of cichlid that went through the auction. So the most expensive fish sold on the night was probably also the most surprising. So we'll try this out. Pause the video right now. I want you to write in the comments below what you think that fish was, what type of fish was the most expensive fish on the night. And for double points, I want you to also type in what you think it actually sold for. Obviously don't know if this is gonna work, but I've seen other YouTubers do it, so I thought I'd give it a try with this. But anyway, the most expensive fish sold on the night was albino bristlenose catfish, uh, but the long fin variety. And that lot of 
three long finned albino bristle nose sold for a whopping $250. Um, a lot of people were left dumbfounded by that result. It was very surprising. Uh, couldn't believe it happened. Uh, they were beautiful long finned albino bristle nose. They were quite large in the bag, uh, pretty much ready to go breeding, breeding trio. And um, yeah, well, I'm just surprised because I've got quite a few in my uh, bristle nose catfish tanks. They're not large by any means. They're still fry and probably a year off from being a size that is uh, spawnable. Adam has a heap of them as well. And I'm sure he's excited to try and sell some of his albino bristlenose catfish now. So yeah, that was the most surprising lot on the night uh, in terms of price paid for fairly common fish. Now, in case you're wondering, did I bid on any lots of fish? I did, and I actually did come home with some brand new fish that I'm excited to show you guys what they are. And I'll show you guys what they are at the end of the video because first I wanna discuss how my lots of fish went. Now, if you saw last week's video, I said that I wasn't likely to get the full 16 lots of fish through the auction. However, I did manage to work out how to get 16 lots of fish from the fish I had in the fish room that I wanted to sell, so that was great. So what I've got here is the auction report, uh, my receipt basically from the night, it lists the species that I sold, uh, the amounts that I sold, uh, the reserve that I put on for each lot, and the eventual amount that those lots of fish sold for. It also shows the amount of money that I made on the night, as well as the amount I finally went home with after the club took their 10% commission. So the receipt lists all the fish in the lot number order, not necessarily the order that the fish sold in on the night. And first lot of fish that are on this receipt, are my pride and joy, my white Alto Lamprologus calvus. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know how much I love calvus. They are my pride and joy. That's them here. And I love looking at this tank. I think they look amazing in a large school like this. So. I had three lots of them go through the auction with each lot containing three fish. So I had the reserve at uh, $46, kind of a weird number to start the reserve at, and I was hoping that they would go for quite a bit more than that. Um, it is a silly reserve and there is a risk that they could potentially sell for $46. However, the first lot that went through sold for $125. Couldn't believe it, that's the most expensive that I have sold out three Alto Lamprologus Calvus for. The next lot of Alto Lamprologus Calvus went for $105. That was pretty much on par with what I've been selling them on average at the auctions. However, the last lot obviously sold for the least, as you would expect, and they sold for $85. Still quite a good result, uh, happy with that. Now the next lot of fish on the receipt are my Kawenga Golds. I also had three lots of those go through with six fish per lot. Uh, the first lot that sold went really well. So the reserve is $30, sold for $80. The next lot sold for $70, and the very last lot sold for $44. So quite a large range there for those three lots of fish. Uh, but obviously very happy with the first two lots of the price that they went for. Really surprised, I didn't expect that. Uh, the next lot of fish that I've got on here are my Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. I had three lots of those go through. Two of those lots contain six fish and one lot contain 10 fish. Uh, the two that contain six fish, I had the reserve of those starting at $40. They didn't really do as well as past auctions where they've gone for almost 70. Uh, my first lot went for $46. One of the other lots went for 48, so $8 above reserve. And the lot of brevis that I sold where there was 10 fish in the lot, the reserve for those was $60. They actually sold for 75, so they did a bit better. However, as I said before, in past auctions, I've sold brevis before with six in the bag for over $70. So that wasn't a really good night for the brevis sunspot. And as I said, the most common fish on the night, albino short fin bristlenose. I had three lots go through with six bristlenose catfish in each lot. The reserve for those, I had it set at $20. I had one lot go for 32, one lot go for 28, and another lot go for 30. About $5 per fish, not too bad, kind of what I was expecting. Especially when you consider there were so many lots of albino bristlenose catfish, the short fin variety going through the auction. So I was quite happy to get at least $5 per fish uh, go through. Another one of my pride and joy in the entire fish room are my Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold. I only had four per lot this time. I'd like to put six per lot, uh, but I didn't feel I had enough at the right sellable size to uh, sell through the auction. So I lowered the amount per lot and put four through uh, in each bag. So I started the reserve 
for each of those are $40 and each of those sold for $50 each. So not a bad result. Uh, I would have liked to get a bit, little bit more, but you can't really expect that when um, there's only four small Lamprologos Oscillatus Gold going through the auction. And the last slot that I put through were my large Julichromus Transcriptus Gombi. I really like these fish. They featured quite heavily in my index species profile on Julichromus regani. If you haven't seen that video on how to breed them, you can watch that video right here. However, my Gombies weren't doing anything for me and I think it was possibly because I had a win with some black calvus and some Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. Maybe that's why they never spawned for me, I'm not sure. They did have a period of time where they were the only fish in the tank. Again, there was no spawning activity, so I'm not sure what happened there with them. So I decided to sell them. And also Transcriptus Gombi, they haven't really done well through the auctions in the past. So I thought to myself, why should I continue to struggle with these fish where there isn't really a demand for them anyway? So I thought I would part with them, even though I do really do like the markings on them. And so I put my four large Transcriptus Gombi through the auction had the reserve at 30. I didn't think I would get much for them and I didn't, $42. Um, so yeah, I'm really not surprised there. They struggled to sell. So those were my 16 lots of fish. Again, I thought I would only get about 14 lots of fish through the auction because I just don't have enough stock uh, to sell at the moment. Uh, but I was really pleased that I was, that I was able to work out a way to get 16 lots of fish through the auction. Now, all up on the night, I made $960. That's before the club takes out their 10% commission. So I went home with $864. Wrapped about that, I really didn't expect more than $600 based on past experiences with the auction. I didn't make as much as I did at the Wollongong auction. If I could, I would have increased the volume of Lamprologus Ocelotus Gold per lot of fish, and I probably would have sold something other than my Albino Bristlenose Catfish, but I've got loads of them, and it was a good opportunity to offload some of them. So really happy with the overall result, and Actually, the next day I was contacted by one of the guys who purchased one of my lots of calvus and he came up and purchased another three. Now I do believe the auction on the night was more of a seller's market. There were quite a few fish that were going for pretty high prices like those albino longfin bristlenose catfish. However, the fish that I bid on were Alto Lamprologus compressorceps, the gold variety. I wanted more of them because I've already got three in uh, quarantine in this tank up here. I believe three lots of fish they went through uh, with three per bag. I bid on every lot and unfortunately didn't come home with any of them. Uh, I think each one went for close to 100 or just over $100 for three. Uh, the previous month, I managed to get three fairly cheap for around $70, $75 mark. So I just didn't continue bidding. But the fish I did buy, I'm really thrilled to show you guys what these are. They're fairly rare here in Australia. Uh, you do come across them occasionally. I'm really, really excited that I bought these fish. I've always wanted them, and I really hope you guys like these fish. I'm really looking forward to breeding them, and I guess I should reveal what they are. They are Neolamprologus similis. Now, some of you might be a little bit disappointed by that. I was also actually considering getting some Neolamprologus multifasciatus from my cousin Adam, because I know a lot of you guys want to see me do an in-depth species profile on these fish. They are quite the character, they are awesome fish. I have had them before and have bred them before when I was a lot younger. And I was going to get them even though they are fairly common because I do love those fish. However, I do believe that Neolamprologus similis are much more striking with those extra bars on the gill plate on the head. And they are, I just love those fish. So a pair went through the auction. I don't know if they are a pair, uh, but two went through the auction and I bid for them. There was quite a few people interested in buying those fish. There was no reserve set. And I think the bidding started at $20 and I paid $42 for our two similars. So probably paid some overs there for those guys, but I wanted them really badly. And um, I wanna share the experience with you guys of what these fish do in the fish room. I really can't wait to breed them. Um, again, they're in quarantine. I got home on the night, wasn't sure where I was gonna put them. And uh, I decided just to put them in with the gold compressor seps. The similars are actually larger than the compressor seps. They don't have a problem at the moment and I can see them courting right now. So that's a really good sign. And uh, yeah, they're getting along quite well with the compressor seps. Obviously I'm not gonna keep them in there forever, but they are in quarantine and I had nowhere else to put them in quarantine. So there you have it guys, how my fish went at the major cichlid auction. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.